Hawks at half time. Second half started much better for the Netherlands. Two great breaks led to tries. After tries were disallowed for both teams, another Dutch break with a lovely offload put them 12 points clear. Germany scored twice more but barged over from short range. But a penalty goal for the Netherlands in between had sealed the game. Shoddy Mungo uh, said, In probably the only international rugby league you'll see this year, it was tight in the first half with Germany getting the only try. The Dutch came back into the second half. Schoenmaker looking impressive in the centres. Kicking a penalty was crucial as Germany scored twice late on to make it... Oh, did Germany win 2018 then at full time? Massive credit to both teams for making the game happen in the circumstances. Oh, where did I read that the Netherlands won then? I... Hang on, I'm going to go and check it now. I thought, I thought Holland. Oh, well, hang on, had they? Oh, oh like well, since we, Saturday, wasn't it? Uh, foolish, oh, then. It's not even listed in my app that does all scores of every sport. Okay, let's uh, let's just have a look at Holland rugby league. I mean, we could we could edit out this silence, but that's more work we, for me, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Man, man looks something up on internet connection that's <laughs> that's vast that's vastly doing as much work as it can to keep the call alive. Um, da, 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 we have the end. Oh god, this is slow. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was, a, well, Mascot Browns tweeted, a big congrats to Netherlands Rugby League who defeated Germany 2018 to lift the Griffin Cup. There you go. Um, Carsten got in touch and said, Germany with the better first half and a well-earned 6-0 lead in at half-time. Sadly, the German halfback Brad Bilsber broke his hand shortly before the break. Uh, he played on, but it wasn't as influential as in the first half. Germany looked busted in the second half and the Dutch came back stronger and took an 18-6 lead till the late comeback by the German team. At 18-18, with seven minutes to go, the referee gave a cruel penalty to the home team, which led to the final result of 20-18 to for the Oranges. In all, all in all, a great day for the sport, the players and the fans. A very special thank you to the organisers who had to change the venue two times in five days because of changing government guidelines. The people were absolutely lovely, and it was so good to get to watch a live game again. Both sets of players did their warm-up in special shirts in memory of Simon Cooper, the former German coach and founder of Rugby League Deutschland, who died this year. Yeah, nice nice tribute there as part of the build-up. Yeah, I was trying to see if I could find the teams to see if um, um, Andy Hoggins played for Germany, but there we go. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame... I couldn't watch the game because I was um, it was my my wedding anniversary so I was otherwise tied up but um, it's a shame that we didn't get to get more reporting on, on the game uh, but it's good that we've been able to bring some reporting on the game for everyone so I hope everyone's appreciated that it's good to get the view of Carsten who obviously had a very much a, a, a an inf- uh, you know a role in in being at the game and stuff and uh, some other guys there Alan and, and Dave who, who watched the game too it's good to get a rounded view on the only international rugby league we're going to see this year yeah do you remember going to games do you remember that that was that was fun when we used to be able to do that wasn't it oh, I, I miss it so much I just can't I can't now this week I've got to watch two Wigan games on TV and one of them we're almost certain to lose so um, let's move on to that I suppose shall we with our predictions (laughs) predictions time or guesses let's be fair (laughs) Um, we do know all of the team news for the first four games we're going to talk about and at the same time we don't know any of the team news for the first four <laughs> games we're going to talk about because changes are um, are to be seen in the squads from what we normally see in the Super League it's round 14 and it's on Tuesday 5.30pm Sky Salford versus Warrington warm up for the Challenge Cup game of Salford versus Warrington by playing against each other um, Warrington may 10 changes um, I think (laughs) to their squad bringing in loads of potential debutantes uh, in the in the likes of people I've never heard of before Cole Oakley um, Nathan Roebuck 
but also some people we've seen bits of like Josh Thrulis, who's a very exciting talent, Ellis Longstaff we saw recently, and, and Ellis Robson. Um, Aribi Doro gets another chance to impress. Riley Dean was going to get a go early this year, wasn't he? But but the virus ruled him out, so it's good to see him getting a chance um, in this squad. But they're some of the less familiar names that you might have to become familiar with this week for Warrington. They play a Salford side who've named only 17 players in their squad, although it looks like Tom Gilmore and Ollie Ashall Botto, we mentioned, were... Um, were sort of on ter- joining on terms for potentially getting into their squad last week that they might get into this side and I think they'll need Oli Ash or Bart to play fullback for the next few games if, if he's able to um, uh, big changes for both sides it's, it's a little bit difficult to predict what you think going to happen Tim so um I'll go first, and I'll say Salford's team looks more recognisable, which means they've got more players who've been playing more games in it. So, despite me being concerned about a couple of players in that squad not necessarily being Super League standard in in my eyes, I'm going to go Salford to win this one. Salford by 10. I'm going to say Salford for this one, because um, I think that they're, they're just their squad is more established and they've got probably a bit more quality for this game but I don't think they're going to last over the over the second game so I actually think Salford will win here but but it'll be a reverse on Saturday in the Challenge Cup that's what, I, that's what I think to that in a bit <laughs> yeah no I'm, I'm well, it's, it's, it's lit Literally the same teams. 7.45 also on Sky, Wigan versus St. Helens. St. Helens had last week off. They get next weekend off, so they can play their pretty much full strength side, but Mark Percival's injured, obviously, whereas Wigan make um, double figures numbers of changes to their squad, include 10 changes, including four youngsters who potentially get their um, Wigan debuts, Ben Kilner, Sam Halsall... Kai Pierce Paul, the uh, off season signing from the Broncos Academy, and Amila Hanley, who everyone is excited to see uh, playing playing a Wigan shirt. Getting a Hanley back is, in is, a Wigan shirt is wow. Is is he is he a prop? <laughs> Amila Hanley is is a utility back. He um he he plays at fullback for the academy, but last year he played a game in cent in the centres for the. England Academy or the Lancashire Academy I can't remember now and was outstanding in that in that match actually in the centres so it, 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 there's a few options with him um, some other players in, Chris Hankinson should get a go in this one Liam Burns back in, in the frame um, Jake Shorrocks returns from injury for Wigan you know, we're talking about Wigan's selections because Saints have um got their normal team out <laughs> yeah. uh, it's going to be good to see some of these youngsters play potentially along the line alongside the likes of more experienced men uh, Joe Greenwood Ben Flower Sam Powell Willie Isa Jackson Hastings maybe we'll see but um, ultimately Saints by 20 yeah and the right yeah and, yeah I, I think it's a shame that we're, we're seeing them play their debuts again, in this fixture against Saints rather than in a nothing game against Huddersfield for example but yeah if you know if they can make it in this against a full strength Saints side then they've got something so it's a good opportunity for them and no one expects anything of them so why not go and give it a good rip yeah it's the first time in 15 years or 14 years or so that I'm going into a derby with absolutely zero expectations other than hope that I get entertained um, and maybe Saints will use this as an opportunity to play some of the youngsters that are in the back end of their squad you know the likes of um, Josh Sim and uh, Lewis Hellsby. Dodd maybe might get a chance yeah yeah so Wednesday at half past five it's in the tea time slot it'll be uh, Huddersfield against Hull KR so which which one of these is televised neither they're both on the R League app great BBC Radio Huddersfield here I come again yeah so Huddersfield Hull KR um, not much changes for both sides from from last week's squads uh, you've got to say uh, Crooks actually comes back in doesn't he for Hull KR that's a big big story so yeah. that's a positive um, for Hull KR he'll want to get back to his try scoring ways that he was delivering so well earlier on in the season but I, I can't 
I think there's something going on at Huddersfield. They've got their backs sorted out. Um, they're playing really well together, and they've, they've seemed to have got the combinations working in the back seven of the, of the of the side. The only question marks over Hooker, but other people in the forward pack like Mike Lawrence and um, uh, McQueen and people are, are stepping up. I think so. Huddersfield by fifth by by fifteen, no sixteen. Sorry, Huddersfield by sixteen for me. Yeah, I think Huddersfield. I think that yeah, Hulkow's defence needs to improve four notches to even get it close from what it was last the last two weeks really uh, and I think you know the Caesar show will continue uh, then the other game kind of clashing with this one but it doesn't matter because only people with season ticket access will be able to watch it is Leeds versus Cas- Catalans that's a six o'clock kickoff on Wednesday uh, Leeds obviously are in the Challenge Cup semi-finals as well so they've made big changes and there's players in their side that you'll not have heard of either. Um, well, you might have heard the names, O'Connor and Broadbent, Hall, Tyndall, Harrison, but they're not the people, Edwards, McConnell, but they're not the ones you know. Um, <laughs> I think, <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing Corey Hall. He's a player who went over, who was in the Wigan Academy, but is a Yorkshireman, so has gone back to, to his home county there. Maybe McClellan might get a chance to impress as well. Some of these players could be arguably options as, as fringe people at the back end of the squad for the weekend game in, in Leeds' position. So, you know, and Jack Walker's back. That's a big positive, isn't it, for the... For the yeah, squad. that's great. Uh, whereas Catalan's a full strength, basically. Almost almost, yeah. almost full strength. Um, yeah, I'm going to... I think Catalan will probably have enough quality for this one, but uh, good luck to the, the young lads in the Leeds team. Yeah, I'll go Catalan's by 14 let's say and actually it was a remiss of us to not mention before um, how great it was of Catalans to make sure they got into the game in for the game on yes um, on Friday uh, and, and to that no actually great of Wakefield to manage to make sure they had a team together with more Covid positives on, on their side of things great to Leeds a few weeks ago great to all the clubs for how they've managed to get these games on and the fact that we've only missed four games so far at this stage, there's only four games that haven't been played, I think is testament to all of the clubs working together. So um, Catalans this week get a special nod of appreciation, I think, from us all um, for that. And they benefit by Leeds playing half a side against them and helping them catch them in the table, which is big news. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 7.45 on Sky though we do get to see another televised game and it's Castleford versus Hull FC if you haven't seen them, these two sides play each other enough in the last four weeks we're going to see it again <laughs> yay uh, the squads haven't been announced for this one yet because it's it's not two days before the game as we're recording I I don't know which way to go on this one I really don't so I'm going to let you go first it's the I don't care cup um Two go well, in think... with a mathematical chance of being in the playoffs, and one comes out with a mathematical chance of being in the playoffs. I think that's the I that's think... the one bit of intrigue to this, I guess. I think Cass have got slightly more quality, but I'll have to say probably two a win. <sighs> probably going to err on the side of Cass. I but... think I'm going to edge with Hull FC. Um, it's going to be close. I think one score either way. But I'm going to go Hull FC because the of Castleford's halfback injury situation. Otherwise, I can see where you're coming from overall with the the cast thing. Yeah, and then finally on to the Challenge Cup. Yeah, Challenge Cup semi finals weekend. It's it's time for a big semi. So well, two big semis, two big semis. Uh, the totally wicked stadium and. That'll be the chance to play in one big final at Wembley Stadium, but obviously in front of no crowds, uh, which is a real shame for one of the showpiece events and one of the major earners of our uh, of our sport. But they do you go. think I should go and uh, go and hang around down by Sainsbury's and sort of just lean out wistfully at the appointed time? Yeah, when clubs are arriving, there's no harm in going and saying hello, is there? When the people are arriving, just don't just socially distance though. Yeah. Uh, Saturday 2.30pm on BBC One is Leeds versus Wigan. Both sides are going to go into this relatively fresh because both sides will have rested most of their players. 
which I'll let you go first on on this one. 